here on BBC Two Now, it's Newsnight with Kirsty Walk. The voting's over and the counting's begun, but will it be May Day, May Day for Gordon Brown? Tonight, the latest live from the local elections. 4,000 council seats are up for grabs around the country. The result's crucial for Brown and Cameron. The Ken and Boris show is over, but who takes centre stage in London? Also tonight, what does the Fritzl family's ordeal tell us about Austrian society and its culture of secrecy? And the babysitter accused of murdering a child is free tonight awaiting a retrial following a Newsnight investigation. Good evening. Millions of people have been voting today for 159 councils in England and Wales. The biggest electoral test of Gordon Brown's leadership since he took over as Prime Minister last year. A crucial election too for David Cameron, who set his own target for success, a minimum of 40% of the vote. And in London, has Boris managed to beat Ken? We'll be discussing all this with senior politicians here in the studio. But first tonight, our political editor Michael Crick has spent the day in Bury in Lancashire. A Tory target, he joins us now. Why is Bury just so crucial, Michael? Well, it's the Conservatives' big uh, target in the northwest of England. And it's crucial for the Conservatives to make progress in the northwest because there are so many parliamentary seats here they need to win. They can, if you like, forget almost about the northeast and Scotland, but the northwest, they do need to start making progress. And Bury would be the test of that. Now, actually, they took over running Bury Council last year, but they're three wards short of an overall majority. Now, to get three wards here tonight, they need a swing of about 5% from 2004. So that is quite a tough target for them. Now, Bury, in a way, through its two MPs, has been quite involved in Gordon Brown's recent woes. Ivan Lewis, the health uh, minister, is the MP for Bury South. And he, um, uh, some weeks ago, was talking about how the government was out of touch uh, with, its, uh, with its voters. And, of course, more recently, David Chater, the MP for Bury North, whose majority is less than 3,000, therefore he's under threat, uh, was one of the leaders of the rebellion on the 10 pence uh, tax limit. Now, I was out today uh, at the polling stations, and the 10 pence tax, uh, the 10 pence tax rate, the abolition of it, was one of the things that were people were bringing up as to why they weren't voting Labour this time, or why they thought of not voting Labour. Interestingly, for the first time, in, what in six years, I suppose, uh, going round on these May Day polls, uh, it was the first time that nobody, to me, not one voter, mentioned the war. But they did mention a whole range of other issues as to why they deserted the Labour Party. But it wasn't entirely clear that the vote was going uh, su sufficiently to the Conservatives for them to make that breakthrough here. But it was a wide range of issues, student fees, preferential treatment that people perceive uh, that the Scots are getting, uh, you know, health care uh, and so on. As I went round the polling stations this afternoon talking to the voters. A lot of my father's family come from Bury, and although I've never lived here, I do remember as a boy, my grandma often used to come up with this little rhyme. I dreamt I was dead and to heaven did go. Where did you come from? They wanted to know. I said, I'm from Bury. St Peter did stare. He said, step inside, lass. You're the first one from there. The town boasts of having the best market in the country but it's probably most famous as the home of black puddings. Have some uh, black puddings, please. Have you got the, um, the ones with the really big lumps of fat in the middle? Yeah, I've got them. <laughs> Great. Wicks, original berry black puddings. Bury's most famous son is the 19th century Prime Minister Sir Robert Peel, widely recognised as first leader of the modern Conservative Party. And traditionally, this town has always been rather more conservative than other Lancashire mill towns tending to elect Tory MPs when the party holds power at Westminster. No wonder Peel's successors, David Cameron and William Haig, have made several visits in this campaign. Moorside is one of four wards here the Tories have targeted to take control of the council. Have you just voted? I certainly have. We're from Newsnight at the BBC. Yeah. 
Can you yeah. tell us who you voted? Which party you voted for? Well, I'd like to keep that a bit, you know what I mean, sort of thing. But it's, there's a herd of change as far as I'm concerned. Is there know? really? Is there a reason for that? Well, this 10p tax stuff and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, so presumably you haven't voted Labour? <laughs> who did oh, you no. vote for instead? Uh, no, 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 no. They're okay. not listening. Did you, vote, not listening. did you vote for Tony Blair at any point? Once, yes. Once, right. um, but now I think it's, it's some, someone else has got... There's got to be a bit of a change, that's for me personally. Right. And why did you vote Conservative? Just family. Right. <laughs> family. It's a tradition, is it? Right. Yeah. Okay. No, your dad will be... Your oh, dad, dad won't dad, like dad, that. Your dad will vote Labour. <laughs> Not all those who've deserted Labour here have gone straight to the Conservatives. Some will have abstained, others picked the Lib Dems, and a surprising number admitted to me today voting for the British National Party. Vote for the BMP. You voted for the BMP? Yeah, Do you normally vote for them? Yeah. But what makes you vote for BNP rather than... Um... Because I'm British. That's and... it. Goodbye. OK, thank you. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. I've voted all my life, I'm 77, for Labour. And I've been very disappointed in the way they've handled. When they got in 97, I thought, if, thing, if they do things right, Tories will never get in again. And really, they've slipped up very badly. And was that enough to uh, stop you voting Labour this time? Yes. And so who did you go for instead? Independent. Independent? So you weren't tempted I by the... I wouldn't pizza. vote Tory on principle. Many toyed with the idea of going elsewhere, but a strong candidate in this ward helped shore up Labour's vote, despite grumbles over many diverse issues. I'm a police officer, and obviously with the, um, the whole thing about the back date and the pay, um, with Jackie Smith, was obviously um, on my mind. But so you did vote Labour in the end? I did, yeah. I, I, I've, I voted Labour like, all my voting life. And was that because of local issues or national? Well, yeah, like, like my wife says, obviously the, the, the Labour candidate's done quite a lot for the area around here. Um, Thank you know. God, because we may have been waving otherwise. Hey? So if it was yeah. a, a general election, you might not have voted Labour? Uh, possibly not. Yeah. I was tempted by Conservative for the first time ever. But, um, reasons? Reasons, student fees. Uh, we have to pay for our daughter, obviously, and they don't pay for the fees in Scotland. Um, care for the elderly. Um, but in the end, you stuck with Labour? In the end, I stuck with Labour. You, know, you sort of leaving Labour as well, but but for another party? Yeah, for the Liberal Democrats. And what was your reasoning? Um, losing confidence in Brown. The 10p tax situation, just a, an indication of his inability to, not, to govern the country. But in the end, you too stuck with Labour? For the time being, yeah. Time They're on probation. They're on very much so. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Thank you. If the Tories do take control of Bury tonight, they'll hail it as a breakthrough in a region where they need to win lots more parliamentary seats. If they fail here, though, it will inevitably fuel those doubts about whether David Cameron can ever succeed in Northern England. Michael Crick. Well, the battle royal in these elections has been the bare-knuckle fight between Boris Johnson and Ken Livingstone to be London mayor. Boris has been in the close care of Conservative Central Office and Ken had no choice. He had to wave his close colleague and friend Lee Jasper farewell in the middle of the campaign. David Grossman joins me now from the Greater London Authority building. What's going on, David? Well, I'm quite jealous, Kirsty, that Michael has actually got some activity to report on tonight. They finish voting here in London, but they don't actually start counting until tomorrow. We may not even have a result until this time tomorrow night, hopefully a bit earlier, but we're not guaranteed a result until later tomorrow night. Having said that, the only thing we've really got to go on today is the final poll. That puts uh, Boris Johnson six points ahead on 53% against Ken Livingstone's 47%. But I'm going to chuck in a pretty healthy the health warning on that. The polls in this London contest have been all over the place and one of the questions that will be decided at the end of all this is which polling organisation ends up with egg on its face because frankly they can't all be right. And of course there's the Greater London Assembly positions as well. 
Yes, and they should be quite interesting, not least because they, there's this sort of top-up mechanism in London. A, a rule of thumb is this. If you get something like 5% of the vote, you're going to get one of the top-up seats. 8% will mean two. Now, at the last election in 2004, the BNP came within a whisker of getting one of those seats. The question is, will they get that seat this time? And if so, what happens? How do the rest of, how do the, rest of the politicians react to that? The second question, UKIP, the UK independent Independence Party. The last London elections took place at the same time as the European election, so it focused people's minds on the European question. Now, that meant that they ended up with two of those top-up seats. They're very unlikely to, to repeat that this time, not least because those two GLA members ended up defecting to other parties, so it's not exactly the greatest springboard to defend those seats. Also, the Greens, they ended up with two of those top-up seats. Will they build on that this time? That, of course, is, though, all a bit of a sideshow. The main question Will Ken Livingston repeat his victory of last time and the time before that, a third term as London Mayor, confirming himself as Mr London? Or will Boris Johnson win a first term, heralding perhaps a new golden age for the Conservative Party? Oh, why are we doing this outside my house? Ken Livingston had an air of confident fatalism about him as he left home this morning. He strolled to the polling station, accompanied only by a dozen or so journalists, and one overwhelming question. Is his lease on City Hall about to expire? I think it's going to be a really close one. Um, both the party machines are going to be rushing to make sure we get all the votes out. I think I win, but you can't be certain. That's the whole point of the vote. Boris, look up. There was much more of a scrum around his opponent, Boris Johnson. Some questioned whether he would be able to survive the intensity of the campaign without making some sort of monumental gaffe or other. His team think there are definitely enough potential Conservative voters out there to secure him victory. Comparing different elections is difficult, but roughly in London since 2000, the Conservatives normally get between 450 and 580,000 votes. But at the last local elections in 2006, that figure jumped to nearly 740,000 votes. London appears to be becoming more Conservative. The trend would appear to be with Boris Johnson. Um, we were so toxic in 2000. We really were toxic. There's no other Steve word. Norris was the Conservatives' candidate for the last two mayoral contests. He says that Boris Johnson is running in far more favourable conditions than he ever enjoyed. Now, well... Depends, of course, which pollster you look at, but we're probably something like 30 points more favourable to the Tories than we were four years ago. Now, you know, that creates a completely different climate in London because there's absolutely no doubt that, in almost, as in almost any other local election in Britain, uh, people will vote very much as a verdict on the government. Uh, they, maybe they shouldn't, but they will. And, and if you take that into account and you take Ken's failing fortunes into account, what that marks over eight years is a really quite remarkable transformation in the Tories' fortunes. If we examine the first preference votes at the last mayoral election in 2004, the result was actually by no means a landslide. Just 143,000 votes separated Ken Livingstone from Steve Norris. And actually, the Conservative Party won the election for London Assembly. Ken Livingstone was then more popular than his party. The question is, is he still? Ken Livingstone won in 2004 despite the fact that his party nationally was going down to its most dire result for 40 years. And he, he, he won despite the fact that in the Assembly vote the Conservatives were four points or so ahead of Labour. Ken Livingstone clearly won a personal victory in 2004. The question about this election is whether or not Ken Livingstone can repeat that feat this time around and thereby as a result deny Boris Johnson victory. The Lib Dem candidate, Brian Paddock, arrived at his local polling station for a photo call. He's actually already voted by post. The electoral system means that the second preference votes of his supporters and those of the other smaller parties will probably end up being redistributed between Labour and the Conservatives. In what proportions? Well, that's a question that could be decisive. Another key variable will be turnout. In 2004, it was 37%. 
Many expect that figure to go up. But will it be an even increase, in which case it might be good for Ken Livingston? Or will there be a differential turnout? Will voters in the more conservative outer boroughs turn out more? In which case, that's good news for Boris Johnson. For once, the National Party leaders were not the centre of attention as they cast their votes in London today. But what happens here will have an impact on them. The London mayoral vote, more than any of the other contests taking place in England and Wales, will form the backdrop of British politics for some time to come.